6 pm एम पाकिस्तान स्टैंडर्ड टाइम असल दिस इज रेडियो पाकिस्तान द न्यूज रेड बाय सुमेरा कंवल द हेडलाइंस फर्स्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर अंडरलाइंस द नीड फॉर एक्सप्लॉइटिंग इंडिजिनस एनर्जी रिसोर्स टू जनरेट अफोर्डेबल पावर इन द कंट्री इनगोरेटिंग द रिफर्बिशमेंट प्रोजेक्ट ऑफ यूनिट्स फाइव एंड सिक्स ऑफ मंगला डैम टूडे शहबाज शरीफ एम्फोसाइज द नीड टू इनहेंस पाक यू एस कॉपोरेशन इन ट्रेड एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट फील्ड Russia has agreed to provide crude oil and refined petroleum products to Pakistan on discounted rates. Economic Coordination Committee has accorded approval to import of 580,000 metric tons of wheat from Russia and UK. All parties to the conference of welcoming army chiefs courageous statement on Kashmir has termed it soothing for the wounds inflicted by over a million Indian troops engaged in spilling blood of innocent Kashmiris in illegally occupied territory. England beat Pakistan by 74 runs in the first cricket test of three match series in Rawalpindi today. In the FIFA World Cup 2022 in Qatar, Japan will play against Croatia while Brazil will take on South Korea today. And now the news in details. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif inaugurated today the refurbishment project of units 5 and 6 of Mangla Dam to enhance its power generation capacity. Speaking on the occasion, the Prime Minister termed the project a wonderful example of cooperation between Pakistan and the United States. He said the total cost of this upgradation project is 483 million dollars of which 150 million dollars were provided by the US as grant. Prime Minister emphasized the need for further enhancing bilateral cooperation between Pakistan and United States in the field of trade and investment. Shehbaz Sharif underlined the need for exploiting the indigenous resources including hydel, solar, air and coal to produce cheap electricity. He further said the present government has prepared a project to generate 10,000 megawatts of electricity through solar energy. He further said a power project of 1,320 megawatt has also been initiated at Thar to use the indigenous coal for electricity production. Russia has agreed to provide crude oil and refined petroleum products including petrol and diesel to Pakistan on discounted rates. This was disclosed by Minister of State for Petroleum Musaddiq Masood Malik at a news conference in Islamabad today. Giving details of his recent visit to Moscow, the Minister of State rejected the media reports in Russia has refused to provide petroleum products to Pakistan on discounted rates. The Minister of State said negotiations have been started with the private companies of Russia for the purchase of LNG. He said we also plan to sign a long-term LNG agreement with Russia on government-to-government basis. Musaddiq Malik said progress on pipeline projects including Pakistan Stream Gas Pipeline project was also reviewed during meetings in Moscow. He said a Russian delegation will also visit Pakistan next month to hold further deliberations on it. The Minister of State said despite depletion of our domestic gas resources we have more gas in the winter season this year as compared to the previous year. He said we are implementing a gas load management plan to ensure provision of gas to domestic consumers during cooking times. Musaddiq Malik said we are also ensuring provision of LPG in areas where piped line gases are not available. He said Iran will also provide 2 million pounds of LPG to Pakistan. Negotiations in this regard have been completed with Iran and the LPG will reach Pakistan in a matter of 7 to 10 days. The Minister of State said these steps are aimed at facilitating facilitating the public and ensuring that our industries continue to function and contribute to the national economic growth. The Economic Coordination Committee has accorded approval to import of 450,000 metric tons of wheat from Russia. The approval was granted at a meeting of committee held in Islamabad today with Finance Minister Ishaq Dar in the chair. This wheat will be imported at a rate of $372 per metric ton will be also supplied at Gwadar from February to March next year. The committee also approved import of 130,000 metric tons wheat at the same rate from a UK based company to be supplied at Karachi port from 16th of this month till February next year. Minister for Planning and Development Asan Iqbal says Pakistan is committed to enhance its social development 
performance. Addressing a ceremony in Islamabad today, he said bilateral exchange of knowledge can help strengthen countries' level to learn sustainable development goals implementation. The Minister for Planning said international partners can play their role in creating synergies. Highlighting the threat of climate change, he said countries including Pakistan have been facing climatic risks making the climate adaptation and disaster risk management necessary. He said Pakistan is among top 10 countries worldwide which are most affected by climate change. As Anikbal said, government played an instrumental role in historic decision at COP27 to establish a fund for loss and damage caused by climate disasters. The Minister for Planning and Development said 222 floods in our country have destroyed livelihood of millions of people. He said preliminary estimate suggests that as the direct consequence of the flood, the national poverty rate will increase by 4% approximately, pushing between 8.4 to 9.1 million people below the poverty line. He further said total estimated cost of damages, loss and needs are about $46.4 billion. The Minister of State for Planning and Development announced that a conference of Friends of Pakistan will be organized on 10th of next month to help build Pakistan as climate resilient country. This is Radio Pakistan. Pakistan's ambassador to United States, Masood Khan, has said there is a huge potential of enhancing trade between Pakistan and the U.S. state of Oklahoma. Addressing an event in Oklahoma, he said mining, oil and gas, extractive industry, agriculture, energy and infrastructure development provide solid foundations to enter into a robust win-win partnership. He emphasized for greater interaction between the private sector of two sides. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the all-party Suryat conference has said that the Pakistan's new army chief general Asim Munir's statement on Kashmir is a soothing balm on the Kashmiri's wounds inflicted by over one million Indian troops who are engaged in spilling blood of innocent Kashmiris with impunity. According to Kashmir Media Service, the all-party Suryat conference spokesperson in a statement issued in Sirinagar praised the army chief for courageously raising the demand before the international community to ensure justice and deliver what is promised to the Kashmiris as per relevant UN resolutions. On the other hand, a US-based study has ranked India 8th among the countries at the highest risk of mass killing in 2022-23. Tehran has accused United States, along with some other Western countries, of seeking to cause chaos in Iran to force their conditions in the talks on reviving a 2015 nuclear deal. The Iranian Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdulhayan made the accusation at a joint press conference with his Serbian counterpart following their meeting in Serbia's capital, Belgrade. He said, we do not let anybody incite rights and terrorism in our country. In Palestine, Israeli forces martyred a Palestinian during a raid in the occupied West Bank. The official Palestinian news agency Wafa said Israeli soldiers entered the Desil refugee camp near the city of Bethlehem earlier this morning, sparkling clashes with a group of residents. England beat Pakistan by 74 runs in the first cricket test of three-match series in Rawalpindi today. Oliver Robinson of England, who took five wickets in the match, was declared player of the match. The final scores, England 657 and 264 for seven declared, Pakistan 579 and 268. The second test will be played from 9th of this month in Multan. In the knockout stage of FIFA World Cup 2022 in Qatar, two matches will be played today. In the first match, Japan will face Croatia at 8 p.m. while Brazil will play against South Korea at 12 tonight, Pakistan Standard Time. And finally, the weather. Mainly cold and dry weather is likely to prevail in most parts of the country during the next 12 hours. However, partly cloudy weather is expected in Upper Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Gilgit, Baltistan. Foggy conditions are likely to prevail in Punjab, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Upper Sindh during night and morning hours. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analyses, log on to our website, radio.gov.pk. And also watch live streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com slash radio Pakistan News Official.